Good morning. My name is Doug Spada, and I am a recovering church critic. I sat in church for decades, judgmental, discouraged, and kind of disconnected from the church. And it all revolved around my calling. You know, my life calling at work just went unaddressed by the church, and the church didn't seem like it could or would affirm me for what God had called me to do. There was a significant disconnect. There was walls built. I, w I felt disconnected from the mission of the church. You know, C.S. Lewis said that a sense of divine vision must be restored to man's daily work. And I believed that. And I lived that. But where was my church? I tried to quit church. Some of you may have this feeling. I, but I privately just disconnected from the church and did my own thing out there in the marketplace. And I gave extravagantly. I served the church, but I never really was connected to the mission of church. You know, God never blessed that heart intention and that heart attitude in me. Matter of fact, He took me through years of brokenness. I lost things that were the most precious to me, family, wealth, a lot of different things. As the Heavenly Father began to just speak to me and say, Doug, are you listening to me? Are you, are you in line with what I have for our church and my church in the workplace? So he used a scripture in Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, and he said, Doug, do not remember the former things or the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now, I'm here to encourage you today. All across this country, churches are building bridges and increasing influences. Some of you may not have seen it. I'm going to share a few with you today. But they are taking an intentional approach to affirming and equipping people to live out their faith at work. Matter of fact, all across this nation, like I said, from California to the East Coast, from Minnesota to New York to Texas to Florida, churches are beginning to, to step up to the plate and actually move in the workplace. And we're seeing churches, matter of fact, in Atlanta, we just had a church that's 8,000 members that has decided to change their entire mission statement. And they're actually going to retool the entire church to, to release and to be missionally focused. So let me pause for just a moment. I would like to embed a visual metaphor in your mind before I leave today. Before starting my company years ago, I spent almost a decade serving on fast attack submarines. We did things like we went on spy missions. Um, we chased Soviet subs and, and spied on Soviet subs, all while you guys were, were running your companies and, and growing the companies for, for the kingdom of God. And like I said, I want to implant this visual metaphor in your mind. Sometimes when we deployed, we went on clandestine spy missions. Other times we would deploy, and we, we deployed in what we called a carrier battle group. Now you'll see the carrier battle group up on the screen there. There's many different roles in the carrier battle group. There's fast frigates, there's guided missiles cruisers, there's supply ships, there's fast attack submarines that go out before uh, the carrier battle group. Likewise, we in our cities all have different roles. Some of you run companies of all different sizes and different flavors. Some of you have parachurch ministries. Some of you do both. I met a brother that actually is a pastor, but he's also running a company as the CEO. Now, what's very interesting at the very center of the carrier battle group is something called the aircraft carrier. Now this is a 390,000 ton war machine, probably one of the most potent uh, war machines on the face of this earth. Now here's what's very interesting about this. The carrier is a ship, but its primary purpose, listen, is fulfilled by the mission of the pilots. Now from this day forward, I would like you to think of your local church as an aircraft carrier. You know, unless our churches assume their rightful and biblical positions in the battles we face in the workplace, we cannot fully advance. It's only as the carrier arms, equips, briefs on the battle plan, fuels the jet, and then launches those pilots out into their mission that they assume their maximum dominion. But, unfortunately... Many of our ch churches operate like a cruise ship. <laughs> Think about it. What do you do on a cruise ship? You go to what? You go to be entertained. 
right? You eat a lot. There's very little accountability. And think about a cruise ship. It goes out, it hits a couple ports, and it comes back to the very same place, rarely advancing forward into new territory. If the enemy of our soul can disarm the carrier, confuse the pilots, break the catapult system, then we essentially continue to function as a cruise ship. We as leaders have to take responsibility for this also. We cannot just point our fingers at our pastors because you know what? Many of us have been involved in building the cruise ship. We've funded it. We've worked at it. And frankly, we've enjoyed the cruise ship mentality often. Here's the upside potential. If you and your church can assume a biblical role in this area of work, then we could unleash the most effective indigenous discipleship and evangelism forces on the face of this earth to reach the largest and most fertile mission field of the workplace. See, this is a biblical battle plan to get the pilots launched and in the air. As I close, can I ask you to join us in working with your church and in your cities in retrofitting these cruise ships? It's as if the Pentagon has ordered thousands of cruise ships to be retrofitted and to strike force aircraft carriers. You each have a role. You are already positioned for amazing multiplied influence. Anyway, here's my, my closing exhortation to you. God may very well be asking you to be a catalyst for work-life reformation in your church. Remember, the church is not a cruise ship, but an aircraft carrier.